Mo Dixon, one of the most professional and lucky folk musicians I know. Let me say a few more things about Peter Newland first. Peter Newland's influence on my life was enormous. I have always looked up to this musical brother. He was from a completely different style and form of music than me, but his lyrics and melodies changed my style of playing. After years of watching Peter on many, many rock and roll stages and on my own stages, I have decided he has more natural charisma, writing ability, and survival instincts than anyone I know. He has had major record deals in rock and roll and country and can move an audience any way he feels the good Lord telling him to go better than anyone in the business. That includes all the so-called stars. He actually would make a fine preacher. He listens to other musicians and makes them feel as if their gift is the most special gift there is. And I mean all musicians. From a kid with no experience to an old seasoned entertainer like myself. He picks out the best in you and doesn't try to change you. But you will change if you're around him long enough. He believes in the dreams of the dreamer and is truly the dream merchant. Back to Mr. Mo Dixon, one of the most professional and luckiest folk singers I have ever known. Mo was famous in the folk world and still is. He's played all over the world and at every folk festival known to man. He is also blessed with the healthiest body in the world. Even though the alcohol and drug times, even through those times, Mo was fit as a fiddle. He was a top-notch downhill ski instructor and had a hell of an income from that, and he came from a well-to-do family in Massachusetts. He also had a big heart and a huge smile and wrote some of the most beautiful folk music you ever heard. He's a good friend and brother, and I hope he and his beautiful wife, Trish, will be happy forever. If you want to know more about Mo. You'll have to wait till he writes his own book. I could write a book about our times together from Vermont to Cumberland, Maryland, and Ocean City, Maryland, and Colorado, and New Hope, Pennsylvania, and Nevada City, California. But I don't have time. I just hope we have a chance to sing together again. Damaris Bernhardt. I actually know very little about Damaris, but let me tell you that I think Damaris was born in New England. She had one of the most beautiful voices I have ever heard in my life. She was also one of the most beautiful women I've ever seen in my life. She was Peter Wilson's roommate at one time, and I made a point of going to their apartment at least six times a week to catch a glimpse of her. Sorry, Wilson, but you knew it too. She had many different bands, and Leon always played sax for her. He was a great sax player and probably loved Damaris too. I heard she moved to Brattleboro, Vermont and became the number one person to help people get clean from drugs and booze. I hope she's still singing. Willie Maloney, an old Irish drinking blues harp player who died of cancer. We shared lots of bottles together and played lots of blues. Here's to you, Willie Maloney. Wild Bill Strecker, Mr. Talent, one of the greatest songwriters in the world and a wonderful tenor voice. I hope you do something with it, Billy Boy, I love you. John Roberts, a night of old sea shanties and body songs is a memory never forgotten. We all made it through the first winter and that was enough. Dave and Kathleen went back to Illinois to teach and give birth to Matthew and eventually split up. Bill and Little Darlin' got married and did not live happily ever after. Michael and Alicia went back to Los Angeles that next summer, and Gypsy Lady and I packed up and headed down the coast to build the world's largest nightclub circuit.